Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to draw an elk and I'm going to use colored pencils on sandpaper. Please don't forget to subscribe, give me a like, comment, check out my other videos, stick around. There's worse things on YouTube. Now let's get on with the drawing process. So the first thing I'm going to have to tackle are these antlers. They're very large and very complex. Now I already had a sketch in place that, that I created using the transfer method but now I'm going to use freehand and a couple of different pencils to draw a slightly more detailed sketch because I'll need some clean edges and I'll need to establish a nice contrast between these antlers and the background. The background is going to be very simple with just a couple of different colors it's going to be an out of focus bokeh background. Now I have a very nice selection of greys in this uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos range and by the way the pencils I'm using are Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils and the surface I'm working on is a 1000 grit sandpaper. I'm going to start by working on the background now that I have those antlers in place I'm going to start with an indigo blue, which is a really dark color with a bit of a bluish component to it. So I'm going to make the background a bit darker in some places. Now the background color or the, the color of my paper is kind of like a mid-tone bluish gray, I suppose, or grayish blue, whatever you want to call it but I need to change it a little bit in some places at least and first I started with that indigo blue and then I added a touch of Prussian blue and then a little bit of juniper green here and there to add some greenish tones to it and after that I started blending with a tutelium. I'm going to use a couple of different blending methods here and our uh, paper tutelium is going to be one of the main ones. I use homemade paper tutelions and I'm also going to use my finger every now and then because it's also a very convenient blending tool and it can be used on this surface because this sanded surface creates some residue that you can move around so uh, it works. It works better than on regular paper where you wouldn't really be able to do such things. So here and there I'm going over some parts of the background, background adding a little bit more of that indigo blue to make things a little bit darker and to increase the contrast where needed between those antlers and the background. Now it seems like I'm ruining the edges of those horns of those antlers but uh, they're still there, I know where they are, and I can always clean them up either by using lighter pencils or darker pencils or simply by using my erasers. But now I'm going to start working on the lower part of the background for a change. Here I'm going to use a little bit of this May green and then maybe some other slightly darker colors because, like I said, I want to create an out of focus bokeh background with just some suggestions of maybe some bushes and trees in the background. And for these, I'm mostly going to use these greenish tones, which will make for a nice contrast with the darker top part of the background. And also, um, it, they will make for a nice contrast with the brownish, reddish tones in the in the elk's fur. So I'm blending this as well with a tutelion to soften the edges to make it look out of focus because I don't really want uh, very clean defined shapes. I want blurry shapes but I still do want some suggestions of shapes there. So I'm using a couple of different greens and even a touch of black here and there to make some parts of that background a little bit darker. And then I just blend and blend using a combination of uh, tutelion and my finger. I also added a touch of some lighter colors like this 
greenish yellow color that I don't really know the name of but I use that as well to get that part of the background to be a little bit lighter in some places. Now I'm going to start working on what is probably the most complex part of this drawing process which is the antlers. There's lots of shapes here and each and every one of them has their dark side and light side because some parts of those antlers will be facing the light source or catching more light from the light source others will be facing away from the light source and they will be considerably darker and I will need to try to achieve a great deal of contrast between the two here at the top around the very tip of those antlers I'm gonna have the lightest value and there I'm going to use some very light colored pencils like an ivory colored pencil which is like a yellowish white or um, a, light, a light warm gray that's another one that I plan to use a lot now like I said I have quite a few grays in my range in the Faber-Castell polychromos range and uh, I'm going to use a number of different uh, warm greys, but some of them are going to be a little bit darker than the others. So I have um, I have a couple of different light warm greys, but uh, one of them, which I plan to use at the very tip of those antlers, is so light that it's very close to a white colored pencil. And I may also use... Uh, an ivory colored pencil here and there. They're slightly different in terms of tone but they're very close in terms of the amount of value. So you can see that uh, because uh, the light source is coming from above the, the parts of the antlers which are facing down or curving away from that light source are going to appear darker. And what another thing that I want to achieve is add a little bit of texture, add some suggestion of detail to the surface of those horns so that they look more like um, bone, so that they mo look more like antlers. So they're going to have a little bit of texture. Sometimes those are going to be vertical lines going down the length of, the, of those antlers. Sometimes they're going to be broken up with some smaller horizontal shapes. Notice that I added a touch of burnt ochre to some parts of those antlers because I want some parts of them to be a little bit warmer, like maybe they're catching a little bit more of that warm light from the light source. Some other parts of them will be a little bit cooler and in those areas I will leave a bit more of that bluish dull color of the background to, to break through or maybe I, um, I may even add a touch of some bluish colors like this um, light ultramarine. Anyway, the main point or the main goal is to achieve contrast in value. Contrast in value and clean edges between the antlers and the background as well as the contrast in value between the light side of the antlers and the darker side of the antlers. And of course another color that I'm using for them is just a, a walnut brown which is a darker brown and I use that in combination with a black colored pencil for all of those darker areas or shadow areas of those antlers. And on top of that, I like to play around with colors using some of the lighter grays and a touch of and a touch of burnt ochre here and there. And like I said, I'm also going to be trying to produce these nice looking textures so that uh, they so that the antlers don't look like a really smooth surface. Um, sometimes I have to rotate my drawing a little bit and that's not something I often do when I record my uh, drawing videos but sometimes that helps a lot when you have to keep the edges clean and when you have to change the angle uh, of uh, drawing. So here I, I used a touch of uh, 
flat brush as well for blending to soften some of those areas and now uh, as you can see I'm moving on to the body and now for the body or for that fur I decided to use a brown colored pencil as my base color that I'm going to work on top of but it's not going to be that simple because I only used a very light layer and I'm going to allow it to mix with the background color of the paper so it's going to become a little bit duller and uh, some more of that bluish compo component will break through but that's okay uh, I've achieved what I wanted because I'm going to be adding layers on top of that now it's time to talk a little bit more about those layers because on this surface and this is a 1000 grit sandpaper you can add multiple layers of pencils you can blend colored pencils very easily and they behave quite a bit differently than they do on regular paper. They behave almost like pastel pencils. So it's very easy to work from dark to light, but also from light to dark. You can easily add lighter details on top of the darker areas, which is what I'm doing here. I'm adding uh, lighter marks, lighter hairs, on top of the space color using some light warm grays and the fur is especially going to be lighter here at the top at the part of the back side here which is exposed to the light source so again just like i did with the antlers i'm going to use that range of value and contrast in value to explain the shapes to the viewer you can see how one of the antlers is kind of um, going over that part of the body which is also very nice because it will allow me to uh, create more depth but here I need to do more work on this fur now I need to keep in mind that everything that's in the shadow or everything that's further away from the light source needs to be darker so uh, I have a couple of different warm greys and the ones that I'm going to use here at the bottom in, in the middle around the backside and the thigh and the belly area that's uh, going to be a little bit darker but the warm gray that I plan to use at the top is going to be very light so again here for this middle part of the body mostly the belly area here I used a brown colored pencil then blended that with my brush with a flat brush to establish that base tone and then I started working on top of that with a couple of different light warm grays if you have a different set of colors if you're using different brands of colors you can just try to use a different um, lighter colored pencil it doesn't have to be a warm gray there are some others that would work that would maybe look slightly different but would achieve a similar effect I think um, uh, an ivory colored pencil will definitely work at the top because that's the part of the body which needs to be the lightest and then there are also some I don't know beige colors because uh, later I also intend to use a little bit of light beige red for some parts of the fur on the head and I also soften the texture on some parts of the fur on the back side because uh, it, it's kind of facing away from the from our view from our viewpoint and uh, it's going to be less discernible and the hairs which are facing us directly uh, they're going to be a little bit more easy to discern and it's going to be easier to discern their shapes now I uh, moved on to this top right area where I need to finish the rest of the antlers using pretty much the same approach uh, with those uh, darker colors such as uh, black colored pencil and a walnut brown for the darker sheep uh, for the darker colors or darker areas and the light warm grays and the ivory colored pencil for the lighter ones here I'm moving on to the ear drawing some of the shadow areas first with a black colored pencil then going over that with a brown colored pencil you can see how much I'm actually working from dark to light when I work on this surface. If I were using regular paper, which I rarely ever do when I work in colored pencil, I would have to work a lot more from 
uh, light to dark because it's almost impossible to add uh, lighter details on top of the darker layers on regular paper. Here on this textured surface it's very easy to add lighter details on top and it, it kind of feels more natural that way because uh, it's natural to draw to lay down those shadow areas or those darker areas first and then put those lighter hairs or lighter details on top because obviously those parts of the fur which are lighter are lighter because they're um, they're on top they're closer to the light source they're more exposed to the light source now I'm shading a little bit around the eye socket area and I'm gonna define the edges of the eye and this is a little bit complex and a little bit tricky because uh, there are some really small shapes here so I need to keep my pencils sharp but I also need to try to make a transition from that darker area where the pupil is towards the lighter area of the lighter portion of the eyeball which is uh, catching a little bit of light and there's like a small catch light in there but it's kind of subdued it's not very bright and now as you can see I'm uh, using uh, the uh, indigo blue to go around the edge of the head here because I want to establish a contrast with, uh, between the light side of the head which is facing up and the background so I want the background there to be considerably darker but I'm going to shade or color the background in pretty much the same manner that I did with the rest of the background on the left and at the top and again I added a touch of juniper green here and there to make uh, to, to add some greenish tones to the background uh, so now I started uh, working on this basically lower part of the antlers or the part of where the antlers join the head and the head itself and I'm just uh, refining some of the shapes on the head and the muzzle area I'm drawing a few more of those shadow areas using a black colored pencil and in addition to the Faber-Castell black colored pencil I like to use a silky Kohinoor silky black pencil which is a little bit darker because I want uh, those darker areas to be extra dark especially when I layer them on top of lighter areas so my goal here as you can see was to establish those darker areas first to block them in to establish those larger contrasts first and now that I have those shadow areas defined I'm just doing a little bit of softening a bit of blending because I can always go back and uh, refine those details add those finer hairs or segments of hairs and then I'll work on top of that with some lighter pencils so now the head and the neck area is really starting to take shape because it's only when you define those larger shadow areas that you can begin to understand shapes so now I need to work on this midsection area and because this one is a little bit darker on top of the brown area I'm going to use a little bit of black colored pencil first for, for those shadow areas in the fur those parts of the fur between the clumps where there will be a little bit of shadow and then on top of that I'll apply some lighter pencils here on the neck I'm adding some brown on top of those uh, darker black areas somewhere uh, I'm allowing them to muddy uh, a little bit and to blend a little bit more sometimes I want to keep a little bit more of that contrast here and there I'm adding a touch of burnt ochre where I see that there are some more yellowish tones I'm going to put the reference in the description if you want to check it out um, as for the exact colors that I'm using I can't really be bothered to write those down and after all a lot of people use a completely different brand and different range of colors so it, I don't think it matters that much um, alright so I'm adding some lighter hair here uh, using a warm grey so this is not the lightest warm grey that I have I keep stressing that because I have a couple of different shades and uh, this one is kind of like a 
mid-tone gray, maybe a little bit lighter than that. And I'm going to use the lightest one on top. And here I'm using an even darker gray uh, on the neck area. So I'm back to using that slightly lighter gray here. So I, I keep switching between the three uh, gray, between the three gray colored pencils that I that I have here. And I also have cool grays, uh, which I'm going to use here at the top of the head because this part of the fur here, which is facing up, kind of looks a little bit cooler. So I want something that looks a bit more bluish. And I may even add a touch of blue to it, but it's, it's definitely cooler gray. So I used a light cool gray. It's a little bit different than the warm gray that I used on the left, on the top of the back and on some of the antlers. So I'm going to make a transition towards that grayish area using, uh, again, a brown colored pencil and then a little bit of, um, a little bit of those grays in between. And I see more, some more of those uh, yellowish areas where, which I'm going to do with a burnt ochre. That's going to make the fur appear a bit more lively and a bit more interesting. Because uh, most of the fur looks kind of dull, like a really dull brown, sometimes a slightly darker dull brown, sometimes a little bit lighter, but pretty dull. This burnt ochre will make things a bit warmer and make things a bit more interesting. So I like it and I maybe added a bit more than I should have, but I just felt like it. So here I'm defining this part of the lower part of the antlers where they join the head or the way they grow out of the head. And now I'm just defining the rest of the shapes on the head, adding some suggestions of those uh, darker shadow areas in between clumps of fur and doing the same thing on the neck area as well because I want this lower part of the neck which is facing down to be darker because it's all in the shadow. It's not just darker fur, it's also darker fur that's in the shadow so I may as well use, a, use the darkest pencil that I have for it because it's going to be one of the darkest details on my drawing, so why not emphasize that contrast? Now here, here I'm using a little bit of that uh, light beige red for some areas around the eye to make some sort of a transition between those uh, darker parts of fur uh, towards the lighter ones and just adding some uh, smaller marks to create suggestions of shorter fur uh, as always, when you draw fur, you need to pay attention to the length and the direction of the fur, and you need to try to match the length of the fur and the direction of the fur with the length of your strokes and the direction of your strokes. So that's kind of what I'm doing here on the nose and the head area because the fur is a bit shorter here and I'm just sort of following the shapes and uh, trying to pay attention to the length, trying to make my marks really short here. Again, I'm working with this uh, darker gray and then with a little bit of lighter gray, kind of switching between the two. And I also went in with a few cooler grays on the mouth and around the eye. So I, I used, I think, uh, let me see, five different gray colored pencil, uh, pencils for this one. Three warm grays and two cool grays. You don't really have to do the same if you're trying to uh, draw something like this, but you know, if I have them, why not use them? Now let me say a few words about these um, clumps of fur that I'm drawing here. I'm trying to break up the fur here into uh, some clumps and I'm drawing some of these lighter clumps of fur on top of the darker shadow areas and they're really coming up nicely because this textured surface allows me to create that contrast but um, I'm trying to uh, make them uh, look like they kind of taper a little bit because the fur looks kind of wet in the reference so I'm trying to create that wet look of the fur. And uh, now I need to do a little bit more of the background. I'm uh, still 
I'm using some greens here and um, I want to create the same type of out of focus background on the right side that I did on the left and of course I'm softening that with Tertullian's doing a bit of blending and deliberately leaving some of those darker shadow areas because I do want a little bit of depth and there I don't I do want a bit of contrast I don't want it to look too monotonous so even when I have those blurry shapes I want those shapes to be a bit more interesting I, I want at least a little bit of contrast there and notice how I'm blurring the edges at the top how I'm deliberately creating a blurry edge rather than a clean edge because clean edges are one way to draw the focus of the viewer so now I'm going to do that I'm going to pull those clean marks here on this lower part of the neck uh, which is facing down and these darker clean marks will stand out nicely against the background that will cre create a lot of contrast and my main subject is uh, all full of those uh, strong contrasts and uh, well-defined smaller shapes and textures which is uh, ultimately what makes it stand out against the background these are pretty much the finishing touches on the main subject because I'm uh, reworking the lower part of the neck just adding some more suggestions of those smaller shapes and uh, refining the appearance of the fur here and there sometimes in the head sometimes in the neck but as you can see I'm almost done um, just putting down some smaller lighter shapes here on the head with that light beige red so I used quite a few different colors here but mostly grays in combination with the brown and I think it turned out okay anyway uh, if you want to see longer videos full-length videos real-time footage and much more additional content you should check out my patreon because you'll find a lot more content there as always don't forget to subscribe and now I'm just gonna put my signature here in the lower right corner and that's it the drawing is now finished so I hope you enjoyed it and I'm gonna see you in the next video bye for now